Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a bunch of stories to go over, starting with Apple announcing their own processors, the first Tiger Lake powered notebook, AMD gets serious about their driver issues, Intel is being incredibly deceptive again, and Ryzen 5000 says no to Navi? Okay, it's news time and first up for today, what was leaked not too long ago has come to pass. At WWDC, Apple officially announced their transition from Intel to their own custom processors. Not only that, but they announced the new Mac OS called Big Sur. What's really interesting about this, besides the major design overhaul, is that the new shared architecture between iPhone and Macs makes it incredibly easy for iOS and iPadOS developers to bring their own applications without many modifications. The new Macs will still support older x86-based apps with Rosetta 2, so everything should work fairly well day one. Basically, Apple has clearly been working on this for quite a while. What's more, Intel has officially responded to the news with mostly a canned response, but according to MarketWatch, Apple's products only made up around 4% of Intel's CPU sales. Still, 4% of Intel's sales is nothing to scoff at. Of course, while Macs are interesting, as gamers we love PCs, and if you've been debating on components, check out kit.co slash gamermeld where I go over some that I suggest, plus each part I add a short description for why you may or may not want it. It's currently in the early stages, so I'll definitely be adding more and keeping things updated, including some builds based on pricing, and most of the links are affiliate links, so you're helping the channel out. Make sure to check that out at kit.co slash gamermeld today. Next up for today, Acer announced the first Tiger Lake powered notebook in an upcoming Acer Swift 5. The new laptop is set for release in October of this year, meaning Intel has in fact delivered on their promise to bring their 11th gen Tiger Lake parts by 2020. Hopefully we can expect Intel to be on time from here on out. The new Intel powered Swift 5 starts at $999 US dollars. How high that price goes isn't mentioned, but I'd bet it won't be cheap. Next up for today, AMD seems to be getting serious, or at least listening to their customers when it comes to fixing their Radeon graphics drivers, as the company's newest adrenaline driver allows users to report crashes in the software itself. It's currently only available through Microsoft's Insider program, but I'm sure it'll come to everyone soon. It's done through the System tab with a dedicated bug report tool. I'd definitely argue this was something that's been needed for quite some time now, but I guess it's better late than never. Next up, I've been over Intel's flat out deception when it comes to marketing claims for quite a while now. From comparing a 15 watt CPU to a 25 watt part, to flat out using completely different GPUs in a system and claiming it was all thanks to their CPU. Well, if you thought Intel had learned from their marketing blunders, think again. This time, they come from Intel's Partner Connect program, which I will say isn't intended for the end user, but it's still given to those who ultimately speak to them, making this potentially worse since there's less eyes to spot these ridiculous claims. Luckily, Adore TV was able to catch them. The main one comes from this slide. As you can see, it pits Intel's 10750H against AMD's Ryzen 4900HS, and it shows a pretty huge difference in FPS performance between the two. Well, when we actually put on our thinking caps, things start falling apart. For one, Intel is comparing their 45-watt processor to AMD's 35-watt variant. Why not go up against their full 4900H? Well, don't worry, because it gets much, much worse. Intel also compared in their system the 90-watt 2060 to the 65-watt 2060 Max-Q. Yes, they once again compared effectively two completely different GPUs. Now, I will say that I at least somewhat get it because they're pointing to price, but I'd argue that the Zephyrus G14 is so expensive because of how unbelievably thin and light they were able to get it. That definitely took some engineering work, plus with some of the features that it has, it's barely a fair comparison to discuss price to performance. Anyway, there you have it, Intel yet again pushes the envelope at just how far they're willing to go to pretend they're better. And that's just sad, considering today's last story. If you saw my recent video on a leaked benchmark for Intel's upcoming Tiger Lake part, you saw that it did incredibly well. In that video, I mentioned the fact that AMD still has their RDNA architecture up their sleeve. Well, it looks like they won't be utilizing it all that soon. 
In a recent tweet by resident leaker Komachi, he found and shared the device ID for AMD's upcoming Ryzen 5000 Cezanne APUs. So that'll be their Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 parts. Anyway, with that find, he's pretty confident that next-gen APUs will still be on Vega, given the ID is written the way it is. Obviously, it isn't a guarantee at this point, but given this is accurate, AMD isn't planning the move to Navi until at least the Ryzen 6000 APUs. Talk about a bummer. So while that does it for today, are you bummed about the newest report on Ryzen 5000, or are you more frustrated in the continued deception from Intel? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.